Hello everyone and welcome to Semi Home Studying with Abby. Thank you all so much for tuning in to today's video. I need to explain this video. So today is the day that I am making salsa and I'm going to water boil can it. Now, if you've been following my channel, you know that I've had a little bit of a tumultuous relationship with canning. I was going to pressure can, thought it was like a little too much to conquer at that moment. But I did buy a full pressure canner, which can also double as a water boiling canner. So I wanted to finally at least water boil can something. I made jam, but since that is being stored in the fridge, I did not have to boil can it. So I'm finally doing that today. I am making salsa. So the base recipe is going to be my mother-in-law's salsa recipe, but I was reading about canning salsas and you really have to cook any salsa that you are actually canning to ensure there's no bacteria. So I found a recipe where you cook the salsa. I'm gonna modify those ingredients a little bit to match my mother-in-law's salsa recipe, but I'm hoping that it all comes together well. It should just be, in theory, my mother-in-law's salsa taste with cooked tomatoes instead of raw tomatoes. So we are going to try that today. I still have to get ready for the day and all of that because I'm still in my nice pajama sweater. This is a Christmas sweater and I decided to break it out because it is the end of summer, which means it's almost fall, which means it's close to Christmas. <laughs> And that just gets me excited. So I got my jars out over here. I have, I was worried I didn't have enough, but I think we're gonna be okay. I have some things to compost, I gotta get ready, and I have to work today. So we might be making this on my lunch break. So I'll keep you posted on that, but thank you for tuning into this video. And if you have any canning tips or anything you see that I'm doing that should probably be changed, <laughs> Let me know, I appreciate all the tips. I am just a beginner, I'm just learning. So I appreciate all of your feedback. Let's get to canning. Okay, we have run into my first snafu. <laughs> so I had placed a grocery order that had all of the ingredients and something went horribly wrong. And we only got like four items that we didn't order and somehow everything got canceled. So when I tried to reorder it, I thought I remembered that I needed white onions instead of red onions for this salsa recipe. So I got a bunch of white onions and basically no red onions. I think I only got like one or two. So I need to go get some red onions at the store. Not the biggest deal in the world, but I am on a little bit of a time crunch. I do wish I had remembered that it was red onions. So let's go to the store, pick that up, and then we will get into making our salsa. All right, I got the onions, so it's time to get to work. Now, Let's just take a moment again to appreciate this shirt. This is gonna be a segment. This is a Forrest Gump shirt. I just felt like running. Okay, so I am filling up a pot with water to sterilize, but then I realized I should just be doing this in my pressure canner that doubles as the water boiler. I was gonna use the little pot to sterilize, but I can do the entire thing in the pressure canner. So that is handy. Transfer the water, fill it up a little bit more, and then I'm going to start warming up all of the cans. All right, after the cans are in the canner and starting to warm up so that I can, you know, cook the salsa and fill the cans, I start cutting jalapenos. Now, I need to explain snafu number two that happened here because this will explain the copious amounts of jalapenos that I actually put in. So when I read the recipe, it said you needed one can of tomatoes, one jalapeno, one red onion, and, you know, some of the other seasonings. 
Now I thought when it listed out the cans of tomatoes that they were 14 and a half ounce cans. So I wanted to multiply the recipe by eight to kind of mass make my salsa. And so I ordered four cans of 28 ounce size tomatoes thinking that, you know, four cans of those equals eight cans of the 14 and a half ounce. So I did the mental math thinking that I was multiplying the whole thing by eight, basically. If that was hard to follow, I probably didn't explain that that well. So then when I actually revisited the recipe as I was making it, I realized that I actually only had to multiply the recipe by four. But as you can see here, I've already cut up all eight jalapenos and I'm, you know, halfway through the onions. And so luckily I realized this in time before I cut up all the onions and just have a completely out of whack recipe. But what ended up happening was I did the right amount of onions, I did the right amount of tomatoes, but I just doubled the jalapenos on accident. So this is gonna be a spicy one. This is not gonna be a salsa for me. It's gonna be more be a salsa for my husband because he loves the spice. So um, it actually turned out really well. If you want it extra spicy, I highly recommend just doubling the jalapenos. If you're more like me, you want more mild, I would probably cut them in half. So that's the scoop on why there were so many jalapenos. Didn't mean to make it that spicy, but you know, that's how it turned out. It's all good. I'm actually glad I didn't multiply the recipe by eight and I only multiplied it by four because it was already getting pretty full in both the pot and the food processor. I had to do like four or five different rounds on the food processor because it's pretty small. There were a lot of vegetables. And then as you'll see here, once I actually fill up the tomato or the red pot with all of my salsa ingredients, it's almost overflowing. Like it is pretty close to the top. So it was a happy accident that I got the math wrong and only multiplied it by four. Once all the vegetables are in the pot and I started getting everything kind of warmed up, my cans or my jars are in the canner, just getting nice and warm for the filling. But I still have to add some of the other ingredients into this also, which includes lime juice, garlic, salt, and pepper. So I do that and then we're ready to fill all the jars. What you're seeing here is a lot of progress. <laughs> this is a big step in my cooking because I am cleaning up as I go. I used to never do this and I didn't fully clean up as I go, but it's a big step to at least get some things, you know, out of the way. Now, my husband decided to do a taste test. I knew this was gonna be spicy, so I had him do it. He said it was good, but definitely had a kick. So I'm glad I was not the one with the taste test but we'll save that for the end. I do actually do a taste test. <laughs> so once I knew the salsa was ready to go, I start taking the sterilized jars out of the canner, emptying all the water and just putting them aside for now. I just kept them warm uh, until I was filling them so the jars wouldn't just shatter. And now we're ready to fill the jars. I did this at first with an oven mitt, but it was like too cumbersome to actually hold the jars and you know, it was just awkward. So I decided to use this paper towel. Definitely need a funnel. That's one of my takeaways here, but this worked pretty well until later. I thought that the jar was actually cool enough and I could hold it and then I splashed hot salsa all over my hand. Got a little burn, but you know, it's, it's all good. So, let, note to self, get a funnel, and if you don't have a funnel, definitely don't take the paper towel off your hand. Like, it's always gonna be too hot. So, I don't know, I don't know why I did that, but 
Here I am filling the jars, it's going well. I got three bigger jars and seven little jars. In hindsight, it absolutely wasn't enough jars. I forgot to pick up more at the store and I started realizing this pretty soon after filling the jars that this was, you know, I had too much salsa for the number of jars. So I had this huge one that I got and I decided, you know, I can't actually water boil can this because there's no way that the water will be above the jar lid. So I can't properly can it. But what I can do is at least sterilize the jar, fill in, like fill it up as much as I can with the rest of the salsa and refrigerate it. So at least it'll be edible to eat for a little bit in the fridge. I'm gonna divvy it out to friends and family to just store in the fridge and you know, it should be fine. None of it should go to waste in theory, hopefully. The other ones will be able to store at room temperature so I can save those uh, for a much longer time. So should all turn out in the end. Okay, and then once all of the jars were filled and hot, I took a clean paper towel and wiped off the rim of each jar. You can't really see it from this angle here, but before I closed each lid, I did wipe off the edge with a damp paper towel, closed the lid and put the you know circle top on and lowered them all into the pot. And then I waited for what felt like an extremely long time to get the water to actually fully boil. Also, I thought I was gonna have to add more water to this pot, but I had so many jars in there that the water level actually did end up rising to be over an inch above each one of the jars. So it actually worked out pretty perfectly. This is what it looked like as I started to heat it up. And that is how much salsa I still had left. So this is me filling the huge jar that I will eventually disperse into some smaller jars and I'll just refrigerate that salsa. Okay, so we started to get to a boil and then I figured, you know, this was just too good of a slow-mo shot to pass up. So here's a slow-mo of some canning. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. This is how much salsa I had left in that big can, so quite a bit. And then once all the jars had been boiling for about 15 minutes, I let it go a little bit longer just to be sure. I took them all out and set them on a cooling rack so I could just let them sit overnight to cool naturally while I was sleeping and I would check on them the next morning. All of them looked pretty good, so I was happy with how it turned out. All right, hello everyone. It is the next day and I need to test out how the salsa jars sealed and if they're good. So we're gonna do a little taste test. We're gonna do a little jar seal test and see how it goes. Now I'm sure I mentioned in the voiceover that I accidentally doubled the jalapenos and I am actually terrible with any spicy food. So my husband did taste test it and he said it was pretty good but that it was extremely spicy. So I'm only gonna have like a tiny little bit on a chip because this is just not good news for me. Like I am, I'm really not good at spice. So I'm gonna try it though, because I need it for the video. I need to personally know if it actually has a good flavor or not. These are the sacrifices I will make for this YouTube channel, okay? So let me grab a jar and we will test it all. All right, so none of them look like they have water in it. They all look really good. Now these should be able to store at room temperature since I did water boil can them. So here's the test that I read on the website. If I take off this seal, I should be able to hold the jar like from the lid. I shouldn't be able to just, you know, it should be a tight seal. I'm holding only by the top metal lid and it looks like it is a success. So the seal looks really good. Let's crack it open. Oh, it's a little harder than I thought, but that sounds like a good pop to me. Okay, let me go get a chip and do a taste test. Definitely smells like a good salsa, but definitely a lot of jalapenos. I'm gonna do kind of a bigger chip so that it dies down the spice a little bit. <laughs> and I'll get a chunk of tomato here. Okay, so here's what it looks like. I'm sure you can't really, it's not focusing, but all right, cheers.
<laughs> yeah. Ooh, there's definitely a jalapeno in that. I didn't want to take the time to actually seed any of the jalapenos. My mother-in-law's recipe did not specify if I should seed them or not, so I just didn't. And I figured if it's too spicy, my husband can have a lot of the salsa. A lot of my family members like spicy food, so I thought, you know, maybe this salsa just isn't for me. And I can confirm it's it's not for me. It's definitely too spicy, but the flavor is amazing. And I am very happy with how this turned out. I'm glad all the seals look to be good. There's no water in it or anything, and all of them look pretty good. So I am fully satisfied with how this turned out. It's given me a lot of confidence with my canning and homesteading abilities. And it's definitely just a new skill that I have checked off the list. So there's an infinite amount of things you can can. So this is just one check off the checklist, but I'm excited to explore other things that I am able to can and preserve in this way because it was actually not super hard. The hardest part honestly was waiting for the water to boil. It took a long time with that big of a pot. I'm not the most patient sometimes. So that was honestly the hardest part. The rest of it was pretty okay. Note to self though, I am gonna get a funnel because I did burn my hand a little bit. It's not like terrible, but it did hurt last night trying to go to bed and it's just not fun. I don't wanna do that again. So I have gotten my way around without a funnel thus far, but it's not ideal. So I'm gonna order a funnel before the next time I can. That is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more homesteading videos. Again, if you have any tips on either homesteading skills I should learn or how to do any of these skills better, I am all ears for it because again, I am a beginner. I would like to learn from the experienced pros. So I am more than willing to have feedback and comments on any of these things. But that is all for today. And thank you all so much for watching and tuning in. And I will see you for the next video. Bye everyone.